who's a morning person here? Okay. Who's not a morning person here? You guys probably hate us, don't you? Well, I happen to be the former. I love the mornings and I always have since being little. And this was quite a predicament to my parents because I would even sometimes wake up before them. And being 12 years old and waking up four, five in the morning, there's not much to do, no one to talk to. So I did the only thing that I thought was possible. And I started watching TV until somebody would wake up and there'd be something to do and I could start the day. So this happened and five years passed and I continued on with the Midwestern American life, school, activities, family life, fantastic childhood. And around the age of 17, people start asking, well, what are you going to study? What do you want to do when you grow up? Or what are you, you going to specify? And I said, how, how are we supposed to know? Said, oh, well, just do what you're passionate about. <laughs> This word, this ethereal word, passion, sometimes it, it makes you, uh, you say, well, how do I know what's, what's passion, what's not? Where do I find it? And they say, well, you just, you, you don't know? Said, of course, no, I don't know. So thinking about this, I continued my morning routine until one day I asked myself a question. Boy, I watch a lot of TV. What, what if I replace the TV with something else, with learning something maybe. And I shrugged it off and said, well, that's a good idea. And then I continued watching TV because I didn't know what to learn. Then a couple weeks passed and I was, I was uh, walking by my dad's office and I saw an Italian language learning program on the floor. And I said, hmm, I have nothing else to do right now. I might as well test it out. So I picked it up and was walking towards the computer, and in my head I was thinking, what are, what are you doing? I've tried Latin in school, wasn't successful, couldn't understand it. Tried Spanish, the same story there. So I had told myself, I'm just not a language person. Nope. But something kept me towards the computer, and I put the CD in, and to this day, I remember the moment where the first Italian word came up, and you were supposed to guess the English word. And the Italian word was il cane. And immediately when this word came up, I, I didn't know what it was, but my brain started searching for answers. That's what you do. You start looking for similarities. And, and I was looking through my Latin vocabulary, Spanish, and then something in English, the word canine came to me. And I said, well, it looks enough like it. Why couldn't il cane in Italian mean dog? So I clicked the button and sure enough, the word dog came up. And in that, in that precise moment, an overwhelming feeling came over me. It was, it, was it was undescribable, really. It was a mixture of, I had seen a word, and then there were, I tried to guess what it was, and you were right. And everybody has this feeling when you get something right, or you're, you guess something correctly. But this was unlike anything I had felt before, and I began to ask questions. It was as if someone had taken me to a door, showed me a keyhole, and I looked through and saw unlimited possibilities. I was thrown into a world of questions and questions around language. I started asking, what is language? Why do we use it? What is Italian? Why does canine relate to il cane? I had no idea, but I kept on asking questions and it kept me going. Looking back now, I can biologically look at probably what happened. Curiosity this abstract concept that we all have of curiosity. Well, if you think about it, what actually goes on within your brain when you're curious or when this act is taking place? Between the moment of asking a question and figuring out the answer, you have a space of guessing, asking questions, you know, trying to figure out. In that moment, the neurochemical dopamine is released in the brain. Dopamine is nature's pleasure chemical. Whenever you do something correctly, whenever you do something that nature wants you to keep doing, it releases dopamine. Dopamine is a high five from nature. You're doing well. It's a drug. In this way, this, I became addicted to this drug of dopamine, and it was connected around learning in Italian. And from there, it, it explains everything. I went to the store, bought books around Italian, and I knew the next day, instead of TV, I would replace it with learning Italian. Sure enough, I woke up, I felt great, and I, instead of picking up the remote control, I opened a book, and it began. 
and to this day, it won't stop. It just, every morning, eats me up, the curiosity about language. And this was, uh, this was an incredible moment to me because I had realized that I'm not supposed to wait for a passion. You have to make it. You have to create it and put effort into making your own passion by taking something that interests you just a little bit, asking a question about it, and devoting yourself to that thing. So after a while, I would go, you know, try to talk to people and try to see how well I'm, I'm doing. You would go in the community and say, oh, I want to practice Italian. You'd find someone, start practicing, and you'd get some varied responses, but most of the time they were positive. And that made you feel good. And I said, wow, that's I felt pretty good, you know, I, I like that. And that made you want to go study more. So then, this starts the positive feedback loop. You get compliments, you like the feeling, so you study more, you study more so you get better, and then you get more compliments. It keeps going. Once you start it, it just keeps going. Not to say that there weren't any failures or some hardships. And a large percentage of the world's languages have a rolled R, and English doesn't. So this presented quite a problem for me because if I ever wanted to feel proficient, expert, or a master in any of these languages, I needed to learn how to roll my R, and I couldn't, and I sounded like it. So that was the first issue. The second issue was this thing aggravating German grammar, which I still don't understand. It's still a problem. So that was, it, it's, it's still, a <laughs> it's a work in process. And the last was the musicality of the tones of Mandarin. Now, if many of you know that in Mandarin, if you say a wrong tone in the, in the word, you're misunderstood. So this was extremely difficult to me because they're so precise and it takes a lot of work to recognize and make these sounds. And that was the three, three of the first starting failures, but I learned to work around them and see what I could do. So why, why isn't everybody like this? What's the problem? What, what, is, what is our issue? Why is, aren't people learning these things or finding their passions and creating them? The first one, I believe, is distraction. We're all so distracted with the technological architecture we've built around us, with our phones, with, with each other. There's a status quo we have to keep up with. Every five minutes, we have to change and check something. What's someone else doing? There is, there's no time for focus. There's no time for that natural questioning. And we, we, everybody fears being like everybody else. But at the same time, the thought of being left behind, it looms the darkest of all. You don't want to be left behind. You're constantly checking what other people are doing. This is the problem. We all are just going in a herd. The second is, is, is commitment. We are afraid of commitment. We are liquid. We don't want to make a decision. Though, In fact, the word decision comes from the Latin meaning to drop off, to cut off, scission. When, when we think that we, we stand at the precipice and are addicted to this feeling of looking at a wall of infinite possibilities for us, that we can just choose any of them, but we won't choose. The feeling is too good looking at all of the possibilities, and we won't decide. We ha and then if we do, we have decision remorse. We think, what, what, what happened? You, did, what, did I make the right decision? Some people over there, th they're not doing what I'm doing. And then you, you look back and you're not, and again, you're not focused. And this, this is all taking away from what you could be doing. So th there are some solutions, perhaps, that we can, we can adapt and we can fix this. First, Take a break from this, this surrounding technological building, this, this, this distraction that we have around us. If you just take you know, a hour, couple hours of a fasting of technology and take time to ask questions and think about something, it's not going to kill you. And you won't, you won't have to be afraid of something. The second, I believe, is using technology, but in another way. Yeah, we can be entertained, we can check in, we can, we, can, we can look up information, but have you ever just thought of going on and th saying, I'll learn five new things about five different subjects I've never thought about before in my life? There's five minute videos about the introduction of quantum physics, introduction of Confucianism, introduction to biology. How do you know that you don't 
no, you're not passionate about one of those things. If you just take five of these minutes and say, boy, I, I had no idea that physics was this attainable. I mean, I can understand the basic concepts and with that I can keep going. These videos are out there. We have all of history's information at our fingertips, yet we use a small, tiny percentage of it, and that's a waste. We need to reach in and, and, and realize what we can do, what we don't know. Therefore, I implore each and every one of you, find your door. Find your door and look in the keyhole, forget about everyone else, and once you feel the weakest, once you feel the most tiny, insignificant person, once you see the infinite knowledge behind it, that is the moment it creates a vacuum and it sucks you in. You know that you know nothing and that there's a whole possibility that what you can do. And it's an incredible feeling. That's the curiosity. That's the dopamine. It's the addiction that we all need. And I, I just can't get more excited about it because it inflamed my life and it began something that has taken me here. And it is an unbelievable feeling, absolutely incredible. And knowledge is the key. You just have to get there. With that, vorrei concludere questa presentazione fornendovi qualche umile consiglio. Vous allez devoir travailler extrêmement dur pour réaliser vos rêves. Tu, por ti mismo. Eres el único que puede decidir qué es posible. Vous sé que escribe su propia historia. <laughs> Trau dich, das Unmögliche möglich zu machen. <laughs> Arbeit hart und stopp aldri mit et verbellen dich. Devote your energy to a dream and let curiosity carry you away. Undistract yourself. Thank you. <laughs>